So I'm super fortunate, super blessed for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons is I have a lot of companies reach out to me and say, hey, well, we've got a brand new piece of hardware, brand new software coming out, an update that we think your community is gonna love. And I get an opportunity to check stuff out, to learn it, to then turn around and create courses for the community. Um, and it's a real honor and it's a, it's a real privilege. And I, I love that piece of my job, the research, the then teaching, it's amazing. But it's very rare that I see an update, to, that I see something that I go, okay, this is, really worth talking about. People are gonna love that. And I was, I feel that way and was super excited when I saw this update, Ableset 2 by my buddy, Leo Bernard. Um, I was super excited about Ableset 1. Ableset 2 is has just changed the game. And that's such an overused term. It's a marketing term. But there are, I think, um, about four features that are must have if you're gonna do playback in Ableton Live. Uh, that make Ableset 2 worth the upgrade, worth the new purchase. But there's six features that are really exciting in the new feature that I wanna talk about um, in this video. Now, if you want to update to the new version of Ableset, uh, if you wanna purchase it new, then check out the link in the description of this video. You'll help support this channel by using that, it costs you nothing extra, and you can download that new update, purchase the new version of Ableset using that link. Also, if you wanna know step-by-step -step how to set this up and use it, you're brand new to it, then uh, check out the brand new updated Ableset course that I have uh, on the community, uh, where again, I take you through step-by-step -step how to use Ableset in your particular setup. So um, let's dive in, let's get started talking about some of the brand new features. Now, I'm not gonna do a basic video, I've done that in the past. I'll link to like the intro video I did uh, so you can see that, but let's talk about um, some of my favorite new features. Now, one of the things I've been teaching for a long time it's something called a dynamic guide queue. Essentially, this is how this works. So a guide queue, you can see I have a verse queue here. That is, let me play this verse, for you. Two, That's three, going to announce four. the verse and let us know we're about to head into the verse before we get there. Guide queues are super helpful. Cue tracks, slate tracks, whatever you want to call it, are super helpful to basically keep your band on the same page. So for your band to know we're about to go into the verse, we hear it, that's good. But if we go to loop a section, for example, if I'm looping this intro section, I don't wanna hear the verse cue, I wanna hear the intro cue. And so I've been teaching for many years to set up what I call a dynamic guide cue track. One cue for your guide, one cue for uh, the section you're currently on if you're repeating. So for example, in this case, if we're repeating intro, we want to actually hear this guide cue. And I teach how uh, to set this up and use this with um, what I call a, a virtual MIDI driver, uh, something like Loop BE1 or IEC driver. And I've been teaching this for many, many years. It's a, it's a really great feature. And I stole this from Playback by Multitracks, which is a, a church playback app. It's only useful if you're in the church world. If not, don't even check it out because it doesn't apply to you. But um, there's a really great feature called Dy Dynamic Guide Cues. And I said, how can we figure this out? Leo has made this process just basically just happen in the background. So what I have, two tracks, guide, cue, uh, and I added a plus guide, and then one called plus loop guide. And the plus loop guide is basically the cue for the section I'm in, as opposed to the cue for the section I'm going to. Here's how this works in uh, Ableset. So let's open up my set list in Ableset. This is open in my browser. You don't have to have internet to access this. You don't have to be on the internet to access this. You just open your browser, open the IP address. So I'm in, haven't seen it yet. Uh, let's play the start of this. Let's start at the beginning. Intro, two, here. three, four. Playing from the beginning, we're in the intro. I wanna loop the intro. So I'm gonna click this to activate loop. And I don't know if you noticed this or not, but it automatically muted my guide and automatically unmuted my loop guide. So now we're gonna hear intro, intro two, right? Three, and then we'll four. loop the intro. And then if I wanna get out of this, I can disable loop either by keyboard shortcut or by clicking there. And again, we go back and now we hear the guide for first. So you'll hear in just a second and verse two, and three, we're into four. the verse. So uh, this dynamic guide cue feature is an amazing, amazing update to this that again, makes something I've been teaching for many, many years just basically happen automatically. So this is amazing, Leo. Now, second thing that's killer. This is something I get emails maybe once or twice a month from people going, can I do this in Ableton Live's Arrange View? This is the only way to do this in Ableton Live's Arrange Review. So if I want to, let's say play this verse. So. Uh, let's play this first section here. We'll start on it. Okay. I want to jump to the bridge. So I'm going to click bridge, take you back into Ableton Live. You'll see it jumps to the bridge and the time in which it jumped to the bridge is based on global quantization, which is up here set to one bar. So that basically means at the end, uh, at, at the next downbeat of one, I want you to jump to that section. So one, two, three, four, one. That's where the, the difference happens. This is really helpful for navigating your song. Uh, I teach 
to use your previous and next locator buttons, really simple. You know, I assign it to a MIDI controller and I navigate my set really easily. But people all the time ask me, Will, can I um, choose, like I'm in the intro, and during the intro, can I choose to jump to the bridge, but have that change happen at the end of the intro section, as opposed to waiting for beats, right? And I've seen people try to hack it by using global quantization and increasing it, and you're just making your life, you know, way too complicated, it does not work. Um, but check out what Leo has done. This is really cool. So in Ableset, we have something called jump modes, but I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna go to jump mode and instead of quantize, I'm gonna choose end of section. Now we also have end of song, manual, really cool things we can do there, but I'm gonna do end of section. So now what's cool about this is let's go, um, let's jump back to uh, our verse. So I'll choose our verse, I'll press play. We're in our verse, okay, so that's gonna play. And let's just say, Again, let's do the same thing, let's jump to bridge. Now, what you're gonna see is it's gonna run the entire length of this verse before it jumps to the bridge. So I'm gonna let it run, it's gonna take a second. I know we hear click, but let's just watch what happens. So I have this whole time, I have the entire length of that song section to choose where I wanna go. In this case, we're going to the bridge. You can see the bridge is highlighted. It's saying, okay, we're almost there, we're about to be there, um, and you'll see at the end of this, almost there it's going to jump us to our bridge. So wait one second, we're so close. I picked the longest song section of this song to actually jump, of course, but there we go. And we jump to the bridge and you can see we're in the bridge there. So this really unlocks uh, endless amounts of freedom and flexibility. If you're someone that's really involved, and again, I wanna stress, I have for years and years and years, you previous and next locator, and I've been able to jump entire, entire lengths of songs really easily from that but that's harder for someone to do if you're playing guitar, playing keys, and you just kind of casually hear the MD say, jump to the bridge, jump to the chorus. Um, this is the way to do that and really unlock a lot of really, really killer, cool features, okay? Um, one other feature I wanna talk about, uh, or, well, we've got a few more features, I don't know why I said one other feature, but uh, if you are in my community, in my world, you know the Play Audio 12 and you love it. I've got a Play Audio 12 connected here to my computer. Let's actually choose this as the output for this just for a second so we can see what happens here. So I'm gonna choose the Play Audio 12 as my audio output. Let's go back to uh, Ableset. You'll notice this green button, upper right hand corner. I'm gonna click into this. And what this is, this is status for your Play Audio 12. So you can see I'm on scene A, it's unarmed, meaning I'm gonna do manual switching, automatic switching isn't set up with life sign. Um, but you can see computer one is, is connected, sending audio, computer two is currently not connected. If I wanna to switch to scene B, I can click that and I switch to scene B. You see I'm on scene B, if I'm gonna to switch to scene A, you can see I've switched back to scene A. If I play some audio, I think we have, uh, let's enable this so we get some audio going to outputs. Um, and go back over here, you'll see that light up to show, okay, we are sending audio. And this whole line basically represents output, so you can kind of get a sense of, a uh, very small sense of which outputs are working and sending audio, uh, which, is, which is super, super helpful. So um, if you have a Play Audio 12, you basically need to get Ableset because this makes it to where you could go and do a fly date with your Play Audio 12, with your computer, even a redundant setup. Um, and Leo has some really cool features with redundancy uh, I believe it's called with AbleNet, I think is, is what that's called. Let's pull, yeah, AbleNet, uh, where you can sync computers, you know, uh, but Play Audio 12, you need AbleSet. Go and do your fly gig. You could pull up um, uh, that this URL, this IP address on your phone, control Ableton Live from your phone, or just control it from Safari like this, and still be able to switch your Play Audio 12 uh, from there, which is really, really cool. Okay, two features. I wanna run through really quickly, and these are massive features, but you'll see more about it in Leo's video and his launch video, which I'll also link to, which is great, um, because there's one final feature I wanna show you at the end that is really killer. If you wanna build a master set list in Ableton Live, um, uh, and you have lots of songs talking 100 to 200 songs, you need to stick around to see this specific feature. But really quickly, so one of the things in um, Ableset that's great is the ability to go to this performance view. Uh, and you could go to the performance view. Now you can customize the performance view based on um, uh, individual people. So I can pull up uh, uh, the performance view and say, okay, I wanna see specific tags. So I wanna see the current section we're on, the next section, the tempo, the time signature, the time code for the song, uh, whatever it is, I wanna see the Play Audio 12 status in performance view. Um, that's what I wanna see, but maybe my drummer who has this pulled up on their phone doesn't wanna see that. They just want a very simplified view. They can pull up performance view by going to Ableset, navigating to whatever the address there is uh, in remote. And I wanna stress, you do not have to have internet to do this, you just have to be on the same network. 
So buy a network switch like this, connect all your devices. You don't have to have internet, but just everything networked together. So for instance, your drummer could go over and say, uh, you know what, I want to see tempo, time signature, next section, current section. I don't need time code. Um, this is all I want to see. I don't need the play audio 12 status and they can see this and perform it to you. So multiple people can pull up performance to you, customize it to make it their own. They can choose to, you can say, okay, I want you to be able to control it by leaving it like this, or you could also actually lock it to where they do not get control over performance view, which is really, really killer. Now kind of buried the lead because I forgot to reset this when I went into here and you saw some lyrics over there to the right. So Leo has introduced a really killer feature and I'm gonna talk about it briefly here. I dive into it really in depth in my course um, and you can see in Leo's uh, demo video a little bit more about this, but he's introduced lyrics to Able Set. Here's what's cool about this. So I can go to the setting and I'm going to uh, enable lyrics now. And what I see is lyrics for my song. So if I go and press play, let's press play on this bridge. You could see um, I get lyrics that show up here uh, right next to information about my song. And what's cool about this lyrics view, how am I populating that? That is coming from this lyrics track right here. So you can see it says vocals plus lyrics. Uh, these are MIDI clips that I've typed in uh, uh, lyrics here that are then navigating this lyrics view. This is really, really great. But remember I talked about the piece of being on a customized performance view. I can have multiple lyrics tracks. So I have one for vocals, one for guitars here, and I can choose which one of these I want to see. So for example, I can say, okay, guitar uh, is gonna see this, vocals is going to see this. And what's really uh, incredible about this is you can actually use Chord Pro. I don't have this set up right now, but you could use Chord Pro to, for example, for your guitar's lyrics track to add chords above your lyrics. Now, this is really great. This is, I think, best used for someone who has really simple charts. Um, they maybe are in a cover band and they just need to look up and go, okay, what chord is coming? Uh, you're doing a lot of different songs. This is a really great feature. If you need a teleprompter solution and you don't wanna have to you know, buy a purchase, uh, purchase a new app, don't wanna have to do a lot of extra stuff, this is a really killer feature. Um, uh, that's been integrated into Ableset. And again, the Chord Pro thing is really great. But you may be looking at this and going, well, this is great, but man, this is gonna be a bummer to have to load these MIDI cues in and have to create each one of these from scratch. There's, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Well, um, if you think Leo released this feature without a better way to do this and you don't know Leo very well. So one of the great things about this is he created something called a lyrics tool. So what's really great about this is I can go and I've got the lyrics for these, this song pulled up here. I'm just gonna copy that. Uh, I'm gonna go to the lyrics track and uh, let's call this haven't seen it yet, right? I'm gonna drop my lyrics in here. If I'm using Chord Pro, then I could say, okay, chords are above lyrics. I'm not in this case. So I'm gonna click sync lyrics. What you get is a page here where you can say, okay, I'm good. I'm just gonna download a project file with my lyrics and then that's going to download here in Safari. Uh, and then you can see you just get an Ableton Live project file that you can open and drag in. And that's exactly how I got this. But again, if you think Leo stopped there, you don't know Leo. So uh, you could also drag in a reference file. Again, the reference file has to be the exact same um, uh, uh, arrangement of your song as you have. It's gotta be the correct BPM. Uh, but you drop that in and you can play your song and sync your lyrics to that reference file. Or you could have someone else do this for you that knows nothing about Ableton Live, sync it to that reference file and then download a synced MIDI track cue so you know exactly, okay, this is gonna happen there, that's gonna happen there and drop that into your Ableton Live set. So again, Leo has completely outdone himself with this feature, made it more accessible to anyone, a teleprompter solution, a syncing chords uh, with Ableton solution, easier than I've seen with anything else. Okay. Those are great. Those are killer. I don't think everyone needs that. I don't think everyone needs access to that, but there's a feature that I'm saving for last, like I teased at the beginning, that if you're doing a large amount of songs and you're worried about your computer being able to manage that, uh, and that's something I hear from a lot of people. Will, I'm switching to uh, arrangement view. I'm doing a three-part framework for using tracks. I've got 100, 200 songs. We're in a cover band, but can my computer manage that? I don't really know if your computer can manage that until we try it but Leo has made this really, really simple to do. So check out this feature. There's a brand new feature in Ableset. If I go here, go to settings called multi-file project. So what I'm gonna do is choose a project folder. I've set one up before of formatted songs. So these are all songs where I applied the three-part frame framework for using tracks um, to make this really easy. Now I've gone in, I've also gone and disabled um, the save changes before loading project uh, because I just want this to save. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and save this one. 
uh, just by default. So we'll wait for that to save. Let's open a new live set here because I'm gonna show you this from scratch. Let's go back to our Able Set window. And here's what's really cool about this. Um, there's four songs here, but where in the heck are those songs coming from? Here's what's, what's killer about this. I could select song one and it's gonna load that first song. I can select song two, it's gonna load that song. Song three, it's gonna load that song. And it's gonna automatically open those songs based on when I select them in Ableset. Now, uh, I still have the ability to go, okay, at the end of this song, jump to that next song, open that up. The time it takes to open this is, is slightly dependent on your computer, uh, how big the file is. Um, so you can't do like really smooth transitions from one song to the next. But again, if you've got 200 songs, this is a way easier way to kind of manage this, to throw songs in. Um, at the last minute than it is to create a full set list of all your songs and just kind of hope and pray that your computer can manage this. Um, so uh, I, again, this goes back to why I've been teaching three-part framework for using tracks and telling you to have individual files for each one of your songs and format it with your template. Because if you follow this process, you can implement this immediately right now have a large catalog of songs and get a lot of freedom and flexibility. Now, one of the limitations right now is that you can only have one song in a set at a time. So again, transition wise, doing a medley of songs isn't possible unless you've kind of um, included those two songs and you're treating them as if they're one song. So instead of a medley being this song and that song, just say it's medley and bring those stems together and you're gonna be good and set uh, to do that there. But that's just a few of the features of Able Set 2. Again, it's an incredible, incredible uh, update. Leo's done a fantastic job. It's worth the upgrade if you have Able Set, Able Set 1. It's worth the purchase if you've never tried it before. And if you're still on the fence and still not sure, it's worth downloading the free trial to check it out. Again, if you, uh, you want to do that, check out the link in the description below. Um, you'll be able to support this channel, my efforts, uh, at no extra cost to you while also getting that upgrade or purchasing for the first time. And if you're interested in knowing how to set this up from scratch, um, I take you through from beginning to end in my brand new Able Set 2 course, which you can find, again, link in the description as well. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing, enabling the bell icon. And uh, again, Leo, thanks for checking this out, uh, making this, this uh, new update. I hope you guys enjoyed checking this out, and we'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.